money do a partnership deal if you can't go 50 50 as a partner you're going to have a serious problem on the back end wow we seen french montana he came out i don't know if it was yesterday a couple of days ago and said that a lot of these labels are now taking insurance life insurance policies out on hip-hop artists and when i heard it that got shocked me because it now seems as though it confirms a lot of what Oh, and I've been talking about at least last couple of years and with some conversation with you is they are now cashing in on these hip hop artists' is death. I realize, you know, too much, too much beefing. And we was beefing for real. Like people was like dying and this and that. And it was just like, it was, it was blocking a lot of money. People don't want to touch you. You know what I'm saying? You know, your rap friends, somebody gets shot, your rap friends stop picking up, the label stop picking up. Mm. Nah, it gets, it gets crazy. You know what I'm saying? It gets crazy. But now it's even crazier because- Really? They, they getting life insurance on artists. At least back then, we didn't have that. Somebody told me that shit. Yeah. Is a label signing an artist in good faith if you're taking a life insurance out on? No, you're praying on you're praying on his death. You're praying on making millions on his death. When I heard it, that got shocked me because it now seems as though it confirms a lot of what O and I have been talking about at least the last couple of years. And with some conversation with you, is they are now cashing in on these hip hop artists' deaths on their demise. Because right. if they die, obviously they get not only the recoup from their album sales that are about to spike, but now they have a policy out on them. Is this standard business procedure? Because I had a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, I'm a trucker and this is standard procedure. And it don't seem like it to me. But is it <laughs> to, is, is a standard procedure or just something more to that situation? It's absolutely unethical. Yeah. Just because you're following a standard, Sam, that doesn't make it ethical. Right. It's unethical. It's undermining. And it's criminal, but it's compliant. Mm -hmm. So they're just meeting compliance, but it's absolutely unethical. I, of course, I would turn a side eye to a label that number one doesn't explain clearly that they took a policy out on you. When you read a standard contract, it says it indirectly. It doesn't say it directly. And most of the time, you never even find out. It takes something rare or something to happen like you actually going to buy some insurance, you might find out you already have it as an artist, but yeah, it's definitely unethical, man. And you have to wonder for some of these artists and the things that happened to them, and we always find ourselves asking, what were they thinking? Why would they do something like this? Why would you be in this area of the neighborhood? How could somebody just drive up on you? So forth and so on. How did these people find you? It did, we all come from the same neighborhoods, bro. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I'm I'm not gonna go back to my old neighborhood in Chicago and hang out because I want a piece of chicken. Right. Come on, man. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's something to that, in my opinion. It's something to it. Do you think that they're being more proactive with these life insurance policies because they know like the possibility that these rappers could be killed? And some it's it's more higher than likely that they could be killed now with the rash of violence now in hip hop. You think that's has something to do with it? Everything. If I'm a business owner. Right. I'm going to protect the indemnity of my asset. I got to protect the loss. It's risk management and loss prevention is the number one rule in, in, in investment. So, of course, if I know that this person is making this type of music, living this type of lifestyle, of course I'm going to protect it. I'm going to protect myself against their lifestyle. I'm not necessarily going to ask them to change because that's what's getting them sales. But tell you what I will do, I'll bond them. That means I'm going to put an insurance on them. Because you're not playing on Definitely, because I'm investing money into these guys, and if they, and if they meet their untimely demise, I'm going to be compensated for my investments. The, the, does an independent union make sense in 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 hip? I'll put it in hip hop and R and B or, or music in general. Like, uh, and what I mean by that is having somebody that represents the artist kind of go and go against some of the shit that you see the labels doing, i.e. life insurance policy, the 360 deals and things like that? Or is it just like a doggy dog world and you're just a victim of the system that is the music industry? Would it make I, sense? I talked about this before. Artists need an independent union. Yeah. Similar to the NFL, the mm -hmm. NBA. It needs to be collective bargaining agreements 
there needs to be some level of regulation with the way business is done. Because the way the music business is structured, there are a lot of things that are not publicly put out there for the sake of the business. And those of us that are artists like Sam, you know directly you being an artist, you've been subject to everyone. Every artist has always sat across that table and be like, did you hear what he just said? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, no. But it's too late because you've already, you're in the midst and you're like, damn. Mm -hmm. Now you got to backtrack. And it, it, it and it's, it's, it's constantly happening. And artists do need a separate union that creates a collective bargaining agreement that standardizes these contracts. Powerful, powerful. Um, let's talk about Nipsey real quick. Nipsey Hustle. You know, just recently, you know, the verdict. I think it was probably a week ago now. At this yeah. point, the verdict came in. Um, a lot of people still, you know, think that there's still a conspiracy behind Nipsey Hustle's death. Like, it just they don't believe this guy just went up and just, you know, they had a conversation and he went back and he shot him the way he did. What's your gut feeling on the whole Nipsey situation now? The aftermath, the smoke has settled. The dude got convicted, but people still have a lot of questions. Yeah, just, and again, like you said, oh God, this is anecdotal. It's my personal right. opinion. Right. Me growing up in the environment I grew up in, I think, I don't even think he did it. Mm. I don't even think the guy did it. It just does, because when you're in your neighborhood and you kind of like a, a shot caller. Nip was a shot caller. He was that guy. Mm -hmm. and he was connected to other guys. That's the kind of person you just don't walk up on. That's He's the kind of person you just don't pick an argument with. And then when you couple that with Nip's demeanor, Nip wasn't a let's go pick a fight type guy. Right. So it just, it, it, it I never thought it was the, when I looked at the guy, he doesn't even his demeanor doesn't even show that he has that kind of nature. I just don't see it in him. I I really and a lot of people say I'm a conspiracy theorist around it. I don't think so. I don't think the guy did it. I never did. So wow. I just don't think you're gonna walk up broad daylight right. and do that, man. It just in his neighborhood and get away. It just it don't it doesn't make sense to me. So let me ask you this. If he didn't do it, I'm not going to ask you who did it because obviously nobody, none of us were there. But if right. he didn't do it, why was it done, in your opinion? Um, I think economic interest. I'll leave it at that. Economic interest. Economic conflicts. Say no That's more. Yeah. Man. 